what is what, what is architecture? Uh, I mean, a dictionary definition doesn't really help. I think, in the end, we all know it when we see it. Um, but I always feel the number of good buildings, the, the really good stuff, the amount of really good stuff built each year in the world is really quite small. And if you go and visit it, it's, uh, it's the stuff that is, em is emotionally and intellectually challenging, and you feel it. And I, then you talk to other people about it, architects and non-architects, and they, they know. Um, and then there's a lot of other stuff um, which disappoints, really, which doesn't live up to expectations. And there's a stream of architecture in the middle, which often gets overlooked, where architects try and rather modestly do good buildings that are well-made, well-proportioned, are going to be around for a while, are going to be useful and pleasant to use. Um, and my, I guess my desire is to get more out of that bottom category of the bad into the at least the middle and to accept that the middle is a good aspiration um, and people often fail because they hope for the great stuff and actually it ain't there so if you can't do the great stuff try and do the really good stuff ok so what can architecture do? what can architecture do? I think what it can do is be an expression of care, you know, sort of care for a place and care for people. And I think all the great buildings do that. One of the things that bothers me is what architecture can't do is often it can't provide a terribly good living for people. I don't think architects earn enough and we don't talk about it in a very productive way. And I think one of the reasons we don't earn very well is we can't explain easily what we do. I think it's quite difficult to explain a very complicated thing like architecture in such a way that people under, understand what we do and value it. So what it can do is express care uh, through the building. What it struggles to do is to, is to provide a decent living for those that try and do it. Okay, so what is your architectural position? My position, well, one is I am very interested in that, that second thing of how we, how we try and describe what we do so other people can understand it. And with that, I suppose I'm anti-bullshit. I'm I, uh, uh, a series of anti-things. I'm anti-formalist, buildings that make huge gestures and so on. Um, I'm anti the idea of the avant-garde which has been around for 150 years and gets recycled every, every five or ten years um, and leads to further disappointment. I'm interested in urban design because a figure like Colin Rowe did good work 50, 60 years ago and you can build on it. And architecture is still in the mindset of trying to be like a fine art, so it has to reinvent itself from scratch, which is again is a cycle of disappointment, disappointed lives and disappointing buildings. Uh, so I'm anti-bullshit, anti-importing theories that we don't properly understand from other areas. Uh, and I'm in favour of architects really valuing what they do well and trying to carefully talk about it. And uh, with that careful talking about it, maybe they'd be better at explaining what they did and be better at explaining what they did in such a way that they could get paid better for it. Okay, so um, what is your design method? At the moment, I'm not designing buildings. Uh, I'm trying to write a book, um, and that book is looking at the way we talk about practice. I'm trying to do it in the simplest possible terms. Having said that, it also draws on quite a lot of research into cognitive science or the science of the mind. How do we think? How do we think about designing? Um, and again, it comes back to the problem of um, how we then explain what we do so that we can make sense to each other and to ourselves and to other people.